Steve Schmidt number four. He was the one participant who I did not find through social networking sites. Instead, he sent me an email after receiving a traditional letter in the mail that stated who I was and what this project was about. Shortly thereafter, we had set up a time for me to come visit his Southern Connecticut home, located a short drive from where I lived. Well, first of all, I didn't realize how common my name was. Okay. Um, I find it amazing that there's that many people who share our name. Right. And so I thought it was an interesting project, and um, I, so I thought I would uh, see what happened. This 46-year-old Steve Schmidt was born in Devil's Lake, North Dakota a town located just 16 miles from the Canadian border. He eventually made his way to the East Coast after marrying his wife, Laura, who is from Connecticut. Although this Steve and his family enjoy all the amenities of the digital age, he has no need to be connected through the main social media staples, such as Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I'm wary of putting myself out there too much. Okay. Um, I understand the appeal and I understand the uh, you know, the importance of the whole digital world and the, and the social networking, but it's just really not something that I've really chosen or have any interest in. He works as a librarian. He says that his library has done its best to adapt to the digital age by offering such services as an online library where patrons can download audiobooks or ebooks directly to their portable devices. He also helps maintain his library's website while overseeing its several blogs. One of the most important things about being a, a library, especially a public library, is you have to maintain your relevancy. Okay. Because the second people stop using you and, and the second people stop utilizing your services, then your job's at stake and your livelihood's at stake. So you have to move with the times, and we, we do that in our library. In addition, he writes a blog for his library that is devoted to obscure and forgotten novels, movies, and music. My blog, it's it's funny because I don't really, it's not a, I don't go in there and write a couple of sentences. I have to read a book or I have to watch a movie or I have to listen to some music. So it's a long, long process. I try to get in there, probably do three, three times a month. Okay. But it's usually like, it's a pretty long, I'm, I'm kind of long-winded. Okay. So they're, they're sort of long, in-depth reviews or analysis of, of, of whatever I'm reading or listening to or watching. Still, he enjoys the comforts of the non-digital world as well, such as listening to one of the vinyl records that comprise his extensive collection. He also enjoys flipping through the paper pages of a book as opposed to reading them through an electronic reader. He said that there is still a large congregation of patrons at his library who share the same sentiment. We have a lot of electronic databases. Okay. You know, we have blogs, we have podcasts, etc. But we also have an enormous reading community, people who love their books, and I, personally I find it, the idea of a book very difficult to improve upon. Okay. You know, it reads well in direct sunlight, which is unlike a lot of readers that you hear about. Although he finds pleasure in his blog, he has never entertained the notion of using it to bolster his online identity, or a notion of a self-brand. I'm not that important. I don't feel like I'm that important in okay. the scheme of things, and I have my family, and I have my job, and. I don't know, I don't really feel like I'm that brandable. He has never thought of changing his name, but this Steve Schmidt has never been fond of it either. I mean, it's, it's kind of a harsh name. Although his two children, Owen and Ginger, both have his last name, he would have preferred that they took his wife's surname of Katz. Laura's decision to keep her last name was based on several factors, one being her principles. Just as a feminist, I felt like okay. it was sort of giving up your identity Then there was the possibility of inserting a hyphen between both surnames. What about the hyphen thing? And then I have a good friend named Pete who was visiting us in Chicago when we were engaged. And he said, what are you going to do? Are you going to hyphenate? And I said, I don't know, maybe. And he said, Laura Kat Schmidt. And he said, oh, that sounds like something you stepped in. Oh, God, I stepped in Kat Schmidt. <laughs> and I was like, well, there goes that. We won't do the hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> just stick with the uh, stick with the one name. So that was the only time I considered the, the hyphen. And after spending an afternoon with this Schmidt family, it was time to interview one last Steve Schmidt, me.